I have a blogging application with an article that has many comments, and uh, it may take several minutes for a user to read through a long article and the comments involved before they decide to comment themselves. And in the meantime, other users may have posted additional comments that this user might want to respond to. So it would be nice if we could uh, show these new comments in some way to the user without requiring them to have to reload the entire page. One way to do this is through polling, which is what I'll be covering here in this episode. But some think this is a dated technique because uh, it's often a better choice to go with web sockets and keep a, a socket connection open so you can push uh, these changes to the client instead of having to pull from them frequently. One way to do that is using Fay, which I covered in episode 260. I still think polling has some good use cases though, especially if you don't need instant feedback from the server. Uh, something like a 30 second pull delay probably won't take too much away from this feature if the user doesn't see the comments show up instantly here. And also this way we won't have to worry about keeping a socket connection open and uh, maintaining the separate infrastructure for that. But really there are advantages to each approach and if you expect scaling issues, I encourage you to uh, explore each of the options. Well, let's get started. Here I am in a CoffeeScript file of my Rails app, and uh, polling is frequently done using this function called setTimeout in JavaScript. And this accepts two arguments, the uh, function that you wanted to trigger, and the delay before it should trigger that function. And this is in milliseconds, so this will be a three second delay. And now if I reload this page and then wait a few seconds, I'll get that alert dialog. And this is only going to be triggered once though, the setTimeout function doesn't trigger recurringly. This differs from the set interval function because that is going to trigger that function recurringly every three seconds. Set timeout will only do it once, and I prefer set timeout for polling, so just in case our application takes a while to respond, it's not going to continually hammering the application, and also you can more control the uh, timeout interval this way. Okay, so now we can use this to uh, pull for new comments, and I'm first going to check if the DOM is loaded, and then uh, check to see if we have any uh, comments div on this page, which means that we accept comments here. Which, uh, by the way, this is not compatible with TurboLink, so if you do have TurboLink set up in your app, you'll want to uh, check for the page change event here, as well as just the jQuery DOM is loaded event. Okay, so if we are on the right page, let's start the polling, and I'm actually going to keep all of this behavior inside of an object namespace. Let's call it comment polar, and let's make a pull function on that. So this way we can set up this comment polar up here and define that pull function, which will do the set timeout here. And let's have another function on this comment polar called request, and that'll trigger the jQuery request. So we want to do that, let's say every five seconds for now, but we can bump it up later uh, when we're done testing. Next I'll define that request function and this is going to trigger an Ajax request to the comments controller index action which is what I want to return the uh, comments. However, I don't like putting URLs directly inside of JavaScript. I like to generate them through Rails and then fetch them through a data attribute on an element. So this is going to check the comments div and then uh, check out the data attribute. Let's call it URL. So now I just have to go where that comment tag is defined, which is under the article's show template right here, and define the data URL attribute. And if you don't like putting ERB inside of attribute quotes like this, uh, another option is to use content tag. So we could say content tag div, giving an ID of comments, and then passing in a data hash into here. And that way we can set the URL to the uh, comment or article comments URL because it's a nested resource that means we have to pass in the article like this there we go and I have to make this a block okay so this means our timeout is going to trigger the comments controller index action so we only need to define that here in the comments controller I have a before filter here which loads the nested article resource so I can define index in here and fetch the comments through the article comments and for now, I'm just going to fetch all of them, but we can be more selective later. So I need to generate a template for this, and it's going to be a JavaScript template because that's what we want to respond to. So this means any JavaScript code I put in here will be executed at that time delay. Now, an alternative approach is using JSON, but that means we'll have to render out the comment on the client side, and I usually prefer to use JavaScript initially, unless you're doing some full feature-rich client side application. Now because the set timeout function will only trigger this once, we need to uh, start up the poll again by calling commentpolar.poll, a function like this. 
Now after we reload the page and wait a few seconds, it's going to show us this dialog box. However, there is a problem. It's not going to show this recurringly. So if we wait another five seconds, the dialog doesn't show up again. This is a pretty common problem and it can be very tricky to track down. The issue is that our code here does not have access to this comment puller object that we set up back in this CoffeeScript file. And that's because CoffeeScript scopes each of the files separately, so you'll need to make it global by uh, using the uh, at sign here like this, and that way it'll be able to access the comment puller from everywhere in your application. So now that we have this working so far, let's have this uh, load in the new comments. So we can just access the comments div and then replace the content of it with the comments uh, rendering out. So let's add a render call into here and render out all the comments. So I've already put these in partial, so it'll just render out each of those partials. And we need to escape this with JavaScript, which we can do with a simple call to J. Now let's try this out. I have two uh, browser windows open here, and when I create a new comment in one, and then wait a few seconds, it should show up in the other one. It does right there. So we've got this working, but it's not very efficient. It's loading in all the comments every time it does a pull request. Instead of replacing all the comments, it would be better if we appended to this comments div uh, any of the new comments which have been added since the user last visited the page. So we'll need to scope that in somehow in the controller index action, only to find only the comments where, let's say, let's use the ID for this, where the ID is greater than some parameter that can be passed in through the poll. Now, if you don't like relying on sequential IDs like this, you might want to use a created at timestamp instead, but that gets a little bit messy when you're trying to shuffle that format to the client side and back. Okay, so now we know we have to pass in this after ID parameter in through our pull request, which is right here. So let's pass in that after parameter. And to set this, let's inspect our HTML and add the comment ID in there somewhere. So we'll grab all the comments. And then we'll grab the last one, which will, if we're in a sequential order, this will be the last ID. And then we can grab the, uh, let's make a data attribute on this called ID and fetch it through there. Now I don't have this ID data attribute yet, but we can easily add it going into the comment partial. I'm using div for comment here, so I can add a data parameter on here and setting the comment ID through here. So now with this in place, when our application pulls for comments, it's only going to append any new comments which may have been added. Much more efficient. So this is working pretty well now, but what if instead I want to uh, make the comments invisible at first and add a link saying some comments have been added, click here to show them, so that way it's more apparent to the user that more comments have been added recently. I'm thinking something under the comments div that looks like this, where we say more comments have recently been added and a link to show the comments. And this is going to be invisible by default so we can add it through JavaScript easily when we want to and it's the idea of show comments. So this means I want this to be displayed when we add more comments. Now we can do this in the index JavaScript template. However, I like to keep these JavaScript templates very small and simple and delegate as much as we can to the central JavaScript application. So what I'm going to do instead is make a function on here called add comments and then move the uh, comment HTML as an argument into here. So this way also we can work with CoffeeScript instead of having to use uh, plain JavaScript here. All right, so in that comment puller, I'll define that add comments function and that takes a string of comments HTML content. And here I'll just do the same thing I did in the template except passing in that argument into here and then calling the pull function on this object. Now I want these comments to be invisible at first and I can do that easily through jQuery by just calling hide and passing in the comment string through the jQuery dollar sign function. Pretty cool. And since we've added the invisible comments, I can uh, show the show comments paragraph tag like this. And I only want to do this if we've actually found comments. So let me check first if the comments length is greater than zero. And finally, when the user clicks the show comments link, I want to show all of the comments. So let's set up a click event right here on the anchor tag in there. And if they click on it, then let's uh, call a function on the comment puller. Let's make it show comments. And that is going to be defined here, show comments. And an event is passed into here and we can call prevent default on here so it doesn't trigger the link. And we want to grab all the comment divs and call show on those to show them. And then finally, we want to hide the show comments uh, div 
actually paragraph tag, like this. And let's try this out. I've got the two browser windows open again, and when I post a comment, I should see that paragraph show up here, and there it goes. Save comments have recently been added, and when I click on it, that shows the invisible comment. It works. Well, I'd say this polling functionality is pretty much complete. We can now bump up the time interval, or maybe make it dynamic depending on how frequently the comments are coming in, slow it down for uh, older articles. And also, if we wanted to switch to a uh, uh, more of a push style with WebSockets, it would be pretty easy to do. You just trigger this add comments function whenever you add a comment instead of on the polling. Well, that's it for this episode on polling for changes. Thanks for watching.